to tell you about my new book, Cuckoo's Flight, which takes place about 4,000 years ago in the island of Crete in Greece, in a period of the Aegean Bronze Age we call the Minoan. I've been fascinated by the Minoans for a long time. I think because in many ways they seem very modern with a, a sophisticated civilization and exquisite art. And it seems that they were very peaceful and fairly equal society. But we don't really know that for sure. Because even if some things seem a bit the same that we can relate to, life was very, very different then. Partly because life was hard. And without modern medicine, most people only lived to be about 35 or not that long. And also because of the way that they believed in their gods. The gods were everywhere. They were part of everything and they demanded a lot. Sometimes they might just demand a song or a dance. Sometimes gifts like olive oil or the first fruit that you picked. Sometimes it would even be a human sacrifice. So what fascinates me is that we live such different lives and yet our feelings, people's feelings are still the same inside, even when our beliefs are different and what we go through is different. And to me, that's what's exciting in the story. So I'm going to read you a couple of little things. Here's the very first little sentence. If she had stayed to load the kiln, she should have. She'd never have seen the ship. Mama said the ship still would have been there. So everything had to happen the way it did. But that's not true. Cleo saw it and the world changed. And skipping ahead. Gray girl, misty as the morning sea, dappled like a pebbled beach, her heart beating with Cleo's since they were raised girl and foal on the milk of the mare when Cleo's mother had none. Dada tells of lifting a babe too young to stand to the foal's back so they could learn each other's warmth. And by the time they were two, they moved as one. Mama always afraid, saying that horses wild as stags in the hills had no place in their lives, but couldn't forbid because Dada's gods say they're the heart of his. Cleo wishes the goddess would say the same for her, but the great mother stays silent except on the link she forged between horse and girl, so that even that day when a snake wriggled out from a rock through the mare's front legs, so she shied and reared, throwing Cleo hard to her knees, pain spearing into her hips so fierce she thought she would die, her mind closing in blackness. Grey girl wouldn't let her drown in that dark, wouldn't leave her side. Standing guard on the path, trumpeting a neigh of terror till Petros the herder came, and then Dada, running all the way from town and carrying Cleo home as if she were a babe. She remembers Grey Girl's call and seeing Dada's face drained to the color of ash, but nothing of the moon that followed till she heard Mama weeping, three daughters I've lost so far. Can the great mother not leave me one? And her grandmother's voice, calm and sure, the girl will live. Her life will not be the one we planned, but when life changes, so must we. And she is strong enough to do that. Now I'm gonna show you a few things um, that I went into while writing the book. Oops. So there's the cover, and these are the covers of the other two books in this Aegean world, the Minoan world. And I was lucky enough to go to Crete to research Swallow's Dance, and then I used that same world for Cuckoo's Flight. And I explored the town of Gournay, which is somewhere in there, with an archaeologist who had uh, done part of the excavations. And you can see it's very close to the sea and the ship sheds that I talked about are down there. And 
you can see where the walls of the buildings are still partly there. And look at these roads and the outside wall of the town. It's so exciting to actually walk on the rocks that people laid into a road, laid into walls 4,000 years ago. And this is probably a big altar stone, Sabina said, and that may be for draining blood. There's more, more rooms and walls looking out to sea. And this one on the other side of town at what I called Lookout Hill. And probably you can see the moon rising in different times of the year from there. Then this is the floor of a potter studio. And when I saw that, I thought, I think that my family are going to be potters. And a couple of days later, I decided it for sure because I was hiking down a mountain path and I found this piece of pot, which is from about 1600 BCE. And it's just lying there on the path after all those years. And I said to the archaeologist, Sabina, I think I can see writing on it. That must be the Minoans writing. And she said, no, that's just from being pushed down the hill for 4,000 years, but there is a thumbprint there. And I picked it up and my thumb fitted onto the print. So I knew that my girl would be a potter. And this is an experimental house that the archaeologist built. Uh, she didn't build a second story that they often have, because um, that probably wouldn't be very safe. And these are some more things that come into the story a little bit later. That is called a boar's tusk helmet. And I thought that they must have like pointing tusks pointing up, but they you see they're cut and laid around to make it very tough and a, a, a spear and a dagger. And these giant pots, uh, and you can see they're taller than me. Oops. And these double headed axes, which may have been just for ceremonies, but I could also imagine them going into war. These pictures are because any story always has something from the author in it. And so for me, you can see that horses were a strong part of my life when I was a kid and a teenager. And later on, and I decided that Cleo would have horses. So I thought it was going to be about a girl who would really rather ride horses than learn to be a potter. And I thought about this little figurine that I saw in a museum. And it's probably a priestess or a goddess riding a little horse. And that means that the horses had to be important, even though we often think about how the Minoans jumped bulls. There wouldn't be that picture if they weren't important. So I started writing my story and it wasn't coming to life. I wrote it for about a year or so. And then I started thinking because my sister did this riding trip across Mongolia, which is just the most incredible thing to do. And I thought, wow, how I would love to do something like that. But I can't because uh, some time ago, I actually broke my neck and, and quite a few other things. And although I can walk now, and as I say, even hike up a little mountain, I can't ride. And I started thinking of when I used to dream all the time about riding for many years. And then I realized that my Cleo couldn't ride. She is also disabled and she has to work out who she is now. Because whenever life changes, we have to work out new things about ourselves and how we are going to deal with things. And we've all been doing that so much in the last couple of years as life has changed from day to day, even if it's not an accident or something inside ourselves. We have to keep on working how to change. How are we going to make the best 
lives we can as the world changes around us. And so I'm going to jump to finish with a chapter called Pirates near the end and Cleo's dad, Hector. Hector is at the tiller, steering the swallow painted ship out of a great trading port. Dulos is resting in the small cabin after last night's celebrations. The lady was right. They've done well by starting the trading season early. They've already traded nearly half their goods with more profit than ever before. Now they have a last long sail across to the island of Copper before they return home, laden with everything the town needs to make the precious bronze. Ahead of them, their sister ship has already hoisted her big square sail. But as they clear the shelter of the port and Hector calls for the oars to be shipped, he dreams of pushing the steering paddle further around and ordering the sailors to keep on rowing towards home. Five more days till the full moon of the spring festival. He would give up all the world's bronze for the chance to see his daughter before then, to ignore the lady, the oracle and the gods themselves to rescue her, fleeing across the island in the chariot he built with such love and care. He can't. He doesn't. It's a dream that never leaves him, but with each day it's less relevant. He doesn't know if they could possibly make it home in time now. No one sails against the wind to go that way around the trading route. Suddenly he sees it, an eye blink before the lookout in the bow shouts the warning. A sleek, black-hulled raider's ship. Pirates. They've come out from behind a rocky islet. Their sail is up, filled and fast with a strong north wind. Row, shouts Hector, into the lee of the island. The island's steep cliffs will block the wind. The pirate sail will be no use. They'll both have to depend on their oars. The men pull hard, but the ship is heavy. The pirates have time to pick up their own oars and chase them. Dulos staggers out from the cabin, rubbing his eyes as Hector shouts, Port now! The rowers lift their starboard oars out of the water, haul hard on the port, and turn the ship towards the shelter of the island. The pirates do the same. The long, sharp snout of the pirate boat rams the swallow painted ship. Dulos staggers and falls. Rowers tumble from benches. Hector shoves the tiller with all his strength, but the steering paddle doesn't move. The ship is hard against the rocky cliffs of the little island. Water is pouring through the hole in the side. Cheering wildly, the pirates pull out daggers. Before they have loosened the sail, the first rowers are scrambling over their bow to leap onto the swallow ship's deck. Hector reaches for his dagger. Fight, men, he shouts, running down the center bridge to haul his brother-in-law to his feet. Dulos is staggering, a trickle of blood running down his forehead, but he waves his dagger fiercely. A gust of wind, a whirling whim of the god of the sea, fills the pirate's sail. So I guess one thing I like about books is you can have lots of adventures in your imagination. Next best thing to doing it in real life, or sometimes better, it was pirates. So you'll have to read it yourself to find out what else happens. And I hope you enjoy it if you do. Thanks.